And we are now recording. Start the captioning. And welcome everyone to today's local government education program brought to you by the University of Illinois Extension in cooperation with Rural Partners, an Illinois rural development organization. My name is Mike Delaney and I'm an Extension Community and Economic Development Educator based in Ogle County up here in the Northern State Line region. Today's webinar, as you know, is a follow-up to a presentation from last year, and we'll provide an overview of Intersect Illinois site selection or business recruiting tools. Let's begin with a few quick housekeeping notes. Um, we are recording today's webinar, and at the conclusion of today's presentation, registered participants will receive an email with materials from today's presentation and access to the recording for the webinar. If you didn't register in advance, that's okay, but please drop your, if you'd like to receive these materials, drop your email in the chat box to let us know and we'll make sure to add you to the distribution list for the materials. As always, you're welcome at any time to share your questions in the Zoom chat space by clicking on the chat icon in the lower center of the Zoom screen. Uh, we will review the questions in a Q&A period following the presentations. Now I'd like to welcome to our virtual stage, Ann Silvis, Extension's Community and Economic Development Team Lead, and also today wearing the hat of the board member, a board member of Rural Partners, to introduce our speakers. Ann, the board Thank you, Mike. So my name is Ann Silvis. I work for University of Illinois Extension. Today, I am here wearing my Rural Partners hat. I serve on the board of the Illinois Rural Development Council, which is Rural Partners for Illinois. Uh, so Rural Partners co-sponsors this uh, uh, webinar series with Extension. We're really grateful for that partnership and feel like it brings a lot of good information across the whole state of Illinois. So today our um, two presenters from Intersect Illinois are going to talk about site selection. Uh, we have Paula Paulina San Milan. She is the Vice President of Business Development for Intersect Illinois and leads its business development team. And Josh Wiedenar is the Intersect Illinois Director of Research. So you have complete bio information about our speakers and the email we sent. So I won't repeat all of that. I will just cede the stage to uh, Paulina and Josh. Welcome and thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Anne, uh, for having us. We're very excited. We can see some familiar faces and some people we don't know. So um, we're going to try to keep this presentation a little bit general so that uh, we talk about who we are but please feel free to you know ask any questions during the session and after that can be a little bit more higher level or more specific to day-to-day -day activities of intersect so um as Anne mentioned i have with me josh wagner my colleague that will be the director of research and he will be also giving you a very general idea of how our platform works to interact with communities so who we are, first of all, um, we are the only statewide entity that focuses on business attraction and marketing the state for business. Um, a little bit in terms of the number of jobs that we have created so far, we have assisted on the creation of 14,600 jobs and 4.3 billion in capital investment. We were created in 2016 by Governor Browner administration. At that time, we were a uh, non-for-profit getting funding for private investors. Um, when the switch from Governor Browner to Governor Prisker Pris happened, uh, pretty much the decision was we want to support Intersect Illinois with funding as well. So now we receive money from the state of Illinois, you know, governor's office, as well as for our private investors. So um, we, we are glad about that. We are more aligned with governor's office and the Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity to make sure that we are working projects together and aligning you know, with each other's resources. Next slide. So um, a little bit of what we've done recently. In 2021, really kind of the end of 2020, um, beginning of 2021, uh, we got a new CEO, Dan Seals, if you're not familiar with him. He has experience working for the government, for the state of Illinois, at uh, the Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity, 
He also has experience as a politician. And then he went to the private sector to work in marketing for life science companies. Um, when he started at Intersect Illinois, really his goal was we Intersect Illinois was being very reactive, but not proactive on marketing the state for business and everything positive and good that happens in Illinois. It seems we get a lot of bad breath on Illinois uh, and things bad things are on the news all the time. However, we are not seeing the positive and you know, uh, we wanted to make sure that we were strong, stronger on that end. So at the beginning of 2022, we hired a company, a PR company called Edelman, and we work with them on a campaign called Being Illinois. Uh, the idea of this campaign is to really talk to businesses outside Illinois and market the state for business. So if you don't see a lot of B in Illinois uh, campaign in Illinois, it's because Illinois is not the target. The target is, you know, other states in the U.S. and it's really targeted to corporate decision makers and C-suite for them to to understand that, you know, we have positives and what are our assets. We are we have targeted several industries with this campaign, and after that, after this campaign, uh, there's been a lot of PR and social media more towards Illinois in a positive light, as well as about Intersect Illinois and what we do next. So um, I wanted to give you a taste, a little bit of one of the ads on the Be Illinois campaign for you to have an idea of the messaging and how it looks like. So she's gonna play it right now. When you bring your business to Illinois, you're at the intersection of America and the world, the epicenter of everything. Be where talent meets technology, purpose meets performance, data meets discovery, established meets uncharted. The future meets your front door. Be where the action is. Be in Illinois. Thank you, Josh. So as you can see, uh, one thing that is super important is we want to be, you know, be modern in our looking and clean, but also making sure that we represent not only Chicago, that a lot of people, you know, when they think of Illinois, they think of Chicago, but also that we show a little bit of, you know, what is Illinois besides Chicago. Um, so I mentioned Earn Media happened after this being Illinois campaign. You can see this hasn't been updated this slide but you can see you know there's broadcast there's online media there's print media not only at you know local level but also at the national level and some international as well right now the latest on this campaign is um we are going to start ads in O'Hare airport it's going to be uh pretty much ad campaign in O'Hare, i believe terminal one and terminal three from march to june so if you happen to be in O'Hare Airport at that time, uh, hopefully you, you're able to see some of those be in Illinois campaign. And we're going to um, be able to count some of the people that, you know, scan us for the QR code and things like that. The goal of this campaign is awareness. So really, we're starting with awareness as a, as a whole uh, and changing the perception of Illinois. The second part of that is being more proactive in order for outreach to decision makers and technological companies. For that, we have a group internally, and that involves our research department, our marketing department, and our business development department. And we are targeting an industry per, I want to say, two to three months. And really, it starts with research gathering a list of companies that would be a target to move to Illinois. And there's different parameters to do that, looking for, you know, companies that receive new funding, companies that are growing, companies that, you know, are in an industry that is growing as well that in an industry that makes sense for Illinois and a certain company uh, in terms of size. After that, uh, we pull information on the company as well as email emails and phone numbers of you know, decision makers. So it can be CEO, vice president, director, things like that. And then our marketing team starts sending them very specific messaging, not only wise, but 
not only once, but several times to start sending this messaging to them. Uh, after that, we figure out who are the high engagers, meaning the people that have been opening those emails and maybe clicking on them and contacting us. And we start contacting them directly, the business development team, to see if there's an interest to them to relocate. So all I just want to say, the marketing part, uh, we are really being more proactive than ever with the Being Illinois campaign as well as, you know, our proactive campaign. Uh, in this slide, I'm going to just talk a little bit about the other part of our job, which is what happens when you get a project, right? And what is kind of the time frame of that project and the development of that project. So this is uh, one, two slides that are is very simplified. The first one is when we get a project, it's super important for our team to have a call with the client or the site selection consultant. We also have a one or two pages questionnaire that goes specific into, you know, electric water, wastewater questions. But we, what we wanna want to achieve during that call is we wanna make sure that we understand the project, the company, their main drivers. So I compare a lot this process of buying a house. I wanna know what is your must have deal breakers, and what are your preferred requirements, right? So you're like, I need a two bedroom and two bathroom and I will look at anything else. I need to understand that on a project. So if a company is looking at a certain region, if a company is looking at a certain acreage or an existing building, I need to understand what are their deal breakers and must have requirements and what are their kind of preferred ones. The other thing I want to understand is the geography and then the timing of their project and the timing for us to give them some sites. Um, after that, we will develop information based on our communication with them and put a request of information out to community. So by that time we have you know, decided on the geography, one key thing to keep in mind is we don't decide the geography. However, our goal always is to try to expand the geography in Illinois and try to expand the you know, the places that the client is looking at. So, you know, similar to what I mentioned before about Chicago, some clients, more if they are international, say, I want to be in Chicago. And then when you talk to them, they not only would consider Chicago, but they would consider Chicago to say, or they would consider two hours from Chicago. So we just want to make sure that we expand as much as possible their search because our odds are higher and more communities will be have an opportunity to respond to that request of information. So that is one of our goals. Um, when we send the project out to communities, we usually give them about a week for them to respond to us. Sometimes it's less. I want to be honest. Sometimes the client wants things right away. And the project has started yesterday, right? And sometimes it's a little bit more. If we can afford more time, we, we try to give you more time. Um, during that time, we are working with research team. We're working with the state to put a state proposal in terms of incentives. We're working with research to put a wild Illinois target into the industry, as well as workforce information, suppliers information, and anything else we need. After we receive the request for information, we are able to consolidate them, review, evaluate all of them, and package all that information to the client. Um, there is a proposal system that involves this that George is going to touch based on where communities can upload their properties and respond to them. The goal really from getting a project is to get them to visit Illinois. Um, usually, I want to say 99.9% .9 of our projects, they are looking at other states. So the same as when you're buying a house, you're not just looking at your first house and deciding to just move there. You want to look at several states. So this is the same. They're looking at several states. They're looking at, you know, seven to 20 sites per state. So really our probability, you know, of locating is lower. When they come visit your state and visit some sites, they are looking at, I want to say three to eight sites. So really now you're a strong contender for them and they are spending time and money to go visit your site and to create a relationship with the community. At the site visits, it's 
for us is we give it to the community. It's our time to shine. It's our time to develop our relationship. We are there to hold everyone's hand and to make sure that they are understanding each other in the process, to make sure to maintain confidentiality and to make sure that everything the client wants to achieve during that visit happens. Um, after that, we want, of course, several visits. We want the client to come visit more and more and do additional due diligence and then uh, for them to make a decision if they want to locate in Illinois or not. Next slide. So if the decision I know uh, that usually we ask them for feedback, we ask them for feedback on why Illinois was not chosen. If they have decided some sites, we ask them why the sites didn't work and where are you going? What the state are you going and what city? If it's a yes, we work with the local level and with the state to start working on a press release together and you know, either opening ground, cutting a ribbon, or just a press release. Um, all this process is around 11 months. So when you receive a request of information, of course, not much is gonna happen. You know, the next month, the company may take a decision in 11 months. There are some projects that we've seen on our pipeline for three years or so, so uh, it really depends. We do create around 82 projects a year. I want to say from 80 to 85 projects a year. Those are the new ones. Right now we have our pipeline and existing 82 projects. That is a combination of active projects and old projects. Next slide. So, how do you want to engage with Intersect Illinois and what is important to know from this presentation? One, uh, you really want to listen to Josh right now. And the most important piece is take his email address at the end because you are able to get in our platform, upload your properties, and make sure they are in our platform. The idea of that is when a project comes, you just click add to your properties and you streamline everything, right? You don't wanna do it on your last minute. You don't wanna be updating, adding properties when you just receive a project. Choose five to 10 properties and upload them. And that is also free marketing for your property. Um, check our system for updates. We have a system in the platform that is gonna give you updates on each project. Like I said, you know, there's projects that have been on hold for three years. There's projects that you know, move in 11, in 11 months. So you can see updates in our platform about on all the projects you have submitted. Um, also, Josh is collecting all the information on all the locates um, of companies in Illinois, not only the ones that we work, but everything that's happened in Illinois. So this goes back to make sh making sure that we keep positive news about Illinois. He collects some, all this data and he sends it to Site Selection Magazine. Uh, thanks to you know, Josh efforts and the research department's efforts. We've been, uh, I believe in the last two or three years, number two or number three on Site Selection Magazine uh, in terms of states that have the most uh, expansion locations. So it's super important if you repeat, you know, press release and positive information about Illinois. And then reach out with questions. We are a small team, but mighty. Usually we have a project manager. So every time you receive a request of information, you will see the person's name. Reach out to them with questions about, hey, uh, is this site a good fit for the project? I don't meet all the requirements, but I have this site. Do you think I should submit? Uh, can you extend the deadline? I have a question about utilities. Anything, reach out to us. Uh, we want to make sure that we are working with you. So uh, a little bit more tips, be proactive. So being proactive means making sure that you engage with Josh and asking for a training, a one-on-one -on -one training. You get credentials for the portal. You enter your sites with as much information as possible. And then be reactive when that request of information comes. Sometimes in the last two weeks, we sent seven. So sometimes, you're like, I cannot submit to all of them seven. Read the description. If one of them is a good fit for you, make sure you submit during that week. Uh, selective on the RFIs, like I mentioned, not all of them is, are gonna be a 
good fit for your community. So just make sure that you are responding to the ones that are a good fit and let us know if you have any questions. Remember, it's a competitive process. So not because you're submitting means you're going to get a site visit. They may be looking at 50 sites initially, but you know it is competitive during the entire time. And more if there's a site selection consultant, they are trying to eliminate sites more than add sites to their pipeline. Uh, make sure you follow all the instructions and you send a complete RFI. So back to my thing that they're trying to eliminate sites initially. If your RFI is not complete, if you're not following instructions, most likely they will eliminate your site. We want to make sure that if you put the time already on submitting a site for us, that you stay on the running. So sometimes it's annoying because sometimes each RFI is different and you know, and you are tired and you may have submitted the same property before. Uh, but it is different because it's for another client and it's for another project in another industry. So just keep that in mind that, you know, if you're putting the effort, just make sure at the end you do your best to keep yourself on the running. Pictures and maps are key. So when you upload a property, you need to have a picture of your property. It's like buying a house. If you have a posting on CLO or Lois or something like that, and there's no a picture of your site, you know, they won't take it seriously. So have a, a picture and have a map. That's always helpful with the lines and how the parcel looks like. Uh, work with your partners, meaning if there's utility questions, contact your utilities, contact your water, your wastewater, your electric to make sure you meet those demands and you answer those questions. Sometimes you may think because there's a line or a post, electric post, you will have electricity and you would be surprised the number of times that communities have thought of that. And then at the end, when we contact the utility, they're like, no, you know, we cannot, we cannot meet this electric demand. So super important to work with all your partners. And then again, contact us for any questions. So next. With that, I believe I'm going to pass it to Josh to give you a little bit about our front end and back end. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Paulina. Um, and uh, very happy to be here uh, speaking with all of you today. Uh, and uh, as Paulina um, kind of went over uh, our initial conversation, which was, um, you know, with respect to our organization, uh, the work it is that we do. Uh, as well as, you know, some of the areas and tips and tricks as far as how to work with Intersect Illinois uh, and the importance of <clears throat> our project process um, as it is kind of the, um, you know, main way to be able to be involved in uh, business attraction um, uh, at the state level for uh, through Intersect Illinois. And so uh, with that in mind today, I'll be going through uh, our real estate database and proposal management system. Our real estate database and proposal management system uh, is really a, a purpose-built system. Um, I would say that the front end or the user interface side of uh, our real estate database, which I'll go through first, uh, is particularly purpose-built with our client network in mind. Uh, the back end or the uh, database portion of uh, the real estate database and proposal management system uh, is built with uh, our EDO network um, as well as our usership network in mind uh, to help streamline uh, and efficientize uh, communications from our team to uh, all of our Illinois partners um, and so on and so forth uh, to be able to respond to projects, package them up nicely, uh, and then uh, provide that back to our clients in a way that is uh, not only aesthetically appealing, but is also easily navigable uh, among many other things. And so uh, as you navigate to, as, uh, as we go through this, um, I'm going to navigate to the front portion of our real estate database. Uh, you would do so by just simply going to our website and clicking on looking for a site. Um, from there, you would automatically be uh, taken to this web page. Uh, this may not be a, a particularly um, surprising user interface um, because it is a real estate database and uh, it may be very much similar to uh, what you've seen in um, times past, even in you know your own personal efforts to look for housing or something of the like on Zillow um, or what have you. Uh, so for instance, you immediately see you know the available properties here uh, in the state um, at a total of, of 1,700. Um, 
from there, you're actually able to identify and continue to query um, additional property filters uh, associated with the data from uh, the real estate database that is uh, voluntarily given um, from all of our EDO network, um, as well as our usership network uh, outside of that purview. And so uh, with that in mind, um, again, uh, I will say that this is, is a significantly less traffic portion of the website by our economic development practitioners and user network, uh, but it is heavily trafficked by our client network, um, meaning that uh, our site selection consultants, uh, as we understand it, um, as well as corporate end users will oftentimes be uh, taking a look at the available real estate uh, options for their client or for themselves uh, before they actually go ahead and reach out to um, an organization such as ourselves uh, to be able to begin that project process that Paulina um, had went through uh, slightly earlier in the presentation. And so um, with that in mind, you know, uh, folks are going to be, our client network is going to be kind of searching and, and navigating through this website to see uh, all of the different properties that we have here. And so what you can see here is actually a uh, individual uh, property entity, such as the Nokia office or Cherry Valley um, acreage. So uh, if we were to be interested in looking at one of these properties, uh, for instance, I will just go ahead and select um, one at random. So uh, we will take a look at the gateway uh, trade port here. Uh, upon selecting it, um, you can see a number of different property attributes, um, as well as contact information for uh, the person that um, is, is responsible for that property entity within the system. Uh, you also have a number of different documents available here as well, um, and uh, a nice uh, picture, as well as it gives you an idea of the actual spatial location of that property itself as well. Um, all of these links are you know, uh, customizable or, or are unique to uh, each property entity, so you can share them um, with clients, uh, with partners, with uh, you know, people within your network as well. Um, now, our traffic on this website, um, as far as uh, since you know, we really got this off of the ground, um, I might say in 2018, um, has actually grown year over year um, by 90% uh, or more um, on the average um, over the past years. And so we are continuing to uh, drive traffic through many of those uh, marketing efforts that Paulina was discussing uh, earlier on in the presentation. And really that is to drive um, consistent interest in Illinois as a, bit, as a place for business, um, as well as uh, bring more um, opportunities to all of our uh, Illinois economic development practitioners as well as uh, us for be able to be able to work those projects. Um, there are a number of different map layers um, as well as a number of different ways to kind of continue to query the database and find uh, whatever it is you uh, or the client may be interested in. Um, and at that point, generally that uh, person will go ahead, uh, that client will go ahead and reach out to us and begin that uh, process. Um, now with all of the property search functions uh, in mind, I'm actually going to give you um, an overview of the open and available data uh, that uh, you can use to, you, that's available to your disposal. Um, also on the uh, user interface side or the front end of uh, the real estate database or properties.intersectillinois. Uh, .org. Uh, and that would actually be the Explore Illinois tab. You would navigate to that by clicking right here and it would take you uh, to a page uh, such as this where you would actually be able to select a specific community. I've preloaded it for us uh, so that we can save some time here today. Um, but with that in mind, uh, once you've selected a community, you actually have uh, instantly available, um, ready-made, client-ready uh, infographics. So for instance, you have uh, here, we're looking at Peoria County, um, and you can get an idea of the total population within an area, as well as the age distribution over time and how it's changed. Uh, these are immediately exportable to uh, a JPEG. Um, so you'd be able to send that off to a client if they were in need of a specific type of information. Uh, this goes through uh, a litany of different types of data, and you're actually able to continue to get down to more and more granular levels of information on a specific community, all the way down to individual businesses um, on this portion of the website, uh, is, I call it the Explore Illinois portion of uh, the real estate database. And so um, 
With all of that in mind, I won't go through each and every one of these tabs, but can give you an idea of the types of information that you can uh, gather from this area of the website. Um, and as a maybe a quarter step back, I do want to highlight this as being a particularly important um, area for our EDOs. And, and we and as I understand it, it is much more frequented by our uh, economic development practitioners throughout the state um, because uh, many times or rather often um, the types of information that is requested for a specific project um, on an RFI that you receive from us is going to be in a similar vein as this. So maybe they be, might be interested in a, a certain occupation um, and how many folks uh, are in that occupation within say a 30 minutes drive time. Uh, well, some of that information would be available to be gathered uh, right here on this Explore Illinois portion of the website. So it's incredibly important to remind yourselves of uh, this opportunity or this available data uh, when navigating and trying to answer RFI questions that you receive from Intersect Illinois uh, through our client. Um, and so uh, occupation data uh, here, which you would just select, uh, actually offers you um, cost of labor information as well as labor size. Uh, and you can draw that uh, to uh, different areas, including uh, a, a radius around, uh, around an address as well as a drive time. Demographics are going to give you uh, things such as uh, age brackets as well as um, race, uh, household income, so on and so forth. Uh, labor force is going to uh, group businesses by uh, certain sizes and certain types like industry code. Um, consumer expenditure data, um, as we understand it, uh, our uh, EDOs that are particularly focused on retail attraction can find ex ex consumer expenditure data uh, particularly assistive in their attraction efforts. And so we also have uh, some of that available data there as well. Uh, wages gets down to a much more granular level of, of um, wage data uh, than the occupation data table does, um, but it is drawn to a slightly higher uh, geographic level, so at the municipal or the metropolitan area level. Uh, businesses get down to individual businesses, as I mentioned earlier, and talent gives you an idea of the talent graduating from uh, universities and education, post-secondary educational institutions throughout um, your immediate area. And so with all of that in mind, uh, this is really just to bring home that uh, the, uh, the front end publicly available portion of the real estate database uh, is a really uh, powerful tool, not only for our EDO network, but also for our client network to really better understand uh, the assets that we have here in the state and really for us to be able to put our best foot forward. Um, with all of that in mind, I will actually navigate to uh, the um, back portion of uh, the real estate database, uh, and we will begin to show you um, two uh, things from a very high level perspective and, and really uh, lacking details, uh, or not lacking details, but rather uh, in a one-on-one uh, -on -one training session, you would receive more detailed uh, information with regards to best practices in the system. Uh, but given time today, I just want to make sure that we're able to give you an understanding of how this system uh, really is operationalized in a um, and helps us uh, do our work as well as offer you the opportunity to be a part of the business attraction uh, efforts that we undergo here at Intersect Illinois. Um, and so upon um, logging into your portion of the real estate database and proposal management system at admin.zoomprospector.com, uh, you would immediately see uh, this uh, screen. Um, what you can see here is that there are properties here as well um, as inactive properties. And so uh, properties can become inactive uh, through either purposeful um, removal or um, they uh, had previously uh, had the opportunity to expire. They no longer necessarily do that, but we do make consistent um, uh, analysis of our system to ensure that our properties are of uh, the highest quality. Um, and so if we were to go ahead and hope to uh, first add a property to the real estate database. Um, and again, the uh, adding a property to our real estate database is a crucial step, um, not only to market your properties uh, to our corporate end user and client network, um, but also uh, to be able to actually submit for projects that you receive from Illinois. So uh, one of the cr criteria for you to be able to submit for a project that you received from Intersect Illinois 
um, is to actually have that property entity uploaded onto the real estate database before you can actually attach it to uh, this specific project or active need uh, or proposal or a couple of synonyms, I guess, um, for uh, the projects that we are working. And so um, with all of that in mind, the way that you would actually add a property is you would click on properties and then just simply click on add property. Uh, I will go ahead and do so today, um, but I will not actually enter in um, any of the associated details, uh, but rather use it as a, um, as a visual tool to help you better understand uh, what kind of things can uh, or what what is the necessary information to add um, when uploading a property. And so basic details are going to be uh, quite obvious, you know, name, address, spatial location, so on and so forth, um, as well as total size. Uh, and so that just really helps us get an idea of, you know, what are the absolute necessary details for a property to be, to be even able to be in uh, the real estate database. Uh, these are some of those, right? Uh, upon completion of that uh, data entry, you would just go ahead and click on this save and go to next tab button. Um, the, uh, the other data entry fields I won't go into in as much uh, detail, but I do want to give you an idea of uh, the more information tab. So the more information tab, just like I was talking about with uh, the user interface side of, um, you know, the publicly available portion of, of our real estate database, um, this uh, portion is purpose-built as well. So this more information data entry form is really uh, meant to uh, model in, in, in such a way uh, the, in, the questions that we most oftentimes receive on RFIs um, or as we're developing quest, uh, answers to questions for uh, our client network when uh, they have an active project that they're working with us on. Uh, and so that more information is going to be things like uh, is this uh, property or site uh, for sale or for lease and or both and for what? Um, there's also going to be things like the ceiling height, the number of dock doors, if it's a uh, property, this, uh, if it's a site, you know, the number of acre, contiguous acres uh, available for development, um, as well as uh, utility information, contact information, uh, so on and so forth, as well as also one of the things that is almost always on uh, RFIs uh, that we uh, push out will be things like a distance to nearest interstate highway, distance to the nearest international airport, um, you know, things of that nature. And so uh, once you've actually spent that time and gotten that information down, um, you are actually really truly able to um, have all of your information really in one centralized location uh, that will really allow for and make more efficient uh, your process when responding to a project that you've received from Intersect Illinois. Uh, and so uh, that in, um, that information being in one place is really going to help, uh, you know, efficientize that process. And so uh, that really is um, how to add and most of the information for a property entity on the real estate database. Um, but to go over just two more areas that you're, uh, that are particularly assistive is um, uploading photos. So we do ask that at least a photo uh, that you have usage rights to um, be uploaded uh, onto each and every property entity that you upload into the real estate database, uh, as well as documentation. So this is an incredibly important point to note, particularly for our economic uh, development practitioner users on the system that respond to projects is that uh, documentation on a property entity um, does show up publicly available on the real estate database. And so any information that you were to put here uh, would be publicly available and instantly available to anyone that may happen upon it. Um, and so it is important to note that any confidential project specific documentation would not go uh, on a property entity itself, but rather attached to a proposal, um, which is exactly what I'm going to take you to next. Um, but uh, just as a as an additional comment, uh, the types of documents that I uh, have understood to be particularly impactful are uh, technical documentation that you have the uh, green light to go ahead and add to a property entity on the real estate database is fantastic, um, as well as you know community marketing documentation as well. Um, so things for you know uh, why my community uh, I think would be a great uh, addition doc additional documents here as well. Um, and once you are complete with uploading that property, you would simply navigate to the bottom and click on save and go back to property list. Um, we won't go ahead and do that today, uh, but it would take you back to uh, this page here.
once that loads, you would be able to actually see the individual project uh, properties that are in your area um, and make associated edits as well as continue to monitor um, all of the properties that are on your portion of the database. Um, so now to navigate to um, the proposals section of the real estate database, what you would go ahead and do is click up here and click on manage active needs. The proposals section of the website uh, is really our area, Intersect Illinois area, to be able to uh, distribute notifications of a new business development uh, opportunity or project uh, to Illinois EDOs uh, within our search geography. Um, and so uh, with that in mind, um, this is the area where not only you will be able to interact with that uh, with that pr a proposal, but you are also able to um, receive notification of that proposal. Now, there's no real need to constantly come back and check this area for um, information um, because you will always receive email notification from uh, the business development project manager that is sending out this um, notification. Um, and that information uh, that's contained in that email will be very uh, similar to what is found in this information tab. And so you can see uh, project zero upon receiving that email, you might go ahead and log into this um, into this system and say, all right, I really am considering responding to this project. Let's take a look at the available uh, information we may need to do. Uh, this is really a pilot project, so it has no um, real, it, it's, it is simply used for an example. Um, but oftentimes what will be here is things, uh, details that we can share um, with respect to uh, the client that we're working with and the project that they're hoping to bring to the state. Uh, and so um, things like that that would be found here are going to be um, absolutely necessary criteria, such as, um, you know, for instance, maybe a property has to, maybe this property for this client has to be larger than 50,000 square feet. Uh, well, I may think to myself, hmm, I've got an idea of what properties maybe would, would qualify for this, but let me take a look. Well, you're actually able to do so um, by clicking on add properties. And really this is the first um, portion or the um, major, the first major hurdle that you need to um, jump uh, before su uh, fully uh, submitting for a project that you receive from Illinois. That first major hurdle is actually just having that property and property uploaded to the real estate database. Once it is fully uploaded to the real estate database um, and you are ready to submit that property, you would actually just simply come here uh, to that add, prop uh, add properties uh, portion of the proposal section and click on add. This would go ahead and buffer for but a moment. It would turn into a baby blue pill similar to this green active pill here. Um, and that would just mean that we've received email notification that X person has submitted X property for X project. And so um, upon the submission deadline, uh, our business development project manager will go ahead and review those uh, submissions and determine uh, next best steps. Um, and really, that is the uh, first half of um, what is necessary to uh, submit for a project that you receive from Intersect Illinois. Uh, the second half is downloading, uh, filling out the Excel RFI that you receive for every property that you plan to submit for every project. Uh, and so once you've done uh, that work uh, and filled out that uh, information to the best of your ability, and hopefully it's been made easier because you've spent that time on the front end to fill um the more information tab on the property entity. Um, but once you've finished that Excel RFI, you can go ahead and navigate to the add view documents portion of a specific proposal or project or active need. They are used, those terms are used relatively uh, interchangeably uh, on the system here. Uh, so you would go ahead and do that by clicking on add view documents. From there, you would go ahead and choose and navigate to that location of those files in your computer and go ahead and upload those, uh, as well as any other specifically requested uh, documentation uh, that's been received, uh, that's been asked of by our client. You would want to go ahead and upload that uh, documentation here as well, no matter if it's already attached to the property entity itself. Um, as those documents show up in a different uh, functional area of the proposal that we send off to our client and as such may get lost. So if you are hoping to have 
if the client has requested, for instance, a geotechnical report, um, you would want to be certain to upload that geotechnical report for each and every property that you're submitting for a project uh, to this area as well. Um, and so with all of that in mind, those are really the two criteria or the two things that you must do to be able to respond to a project that you receive from Intersect Illinois. Um, and upon completion of that, really what we look to do is we package up that proposal, uh, put our best foot forward, as Paulina was mentioning earlier with uh, whether it be, you know, uh, customized research, uh, a presentation um, to show, you know, the industry prowess that we have here in the state, um, or many, or many, a litany of different things. Um, we are always trying to put our best foot forward for the state of Illinois um, to be able to be competitive uh, in this business attraction landscape. Um, and with that in mind, those are all the items I had to share uh, with you all today. And I will navigate back to um, our presentation. So I see um, that one of the questions here uh, for you, Josh, is where all the data from the front end comes from and how often is updated? Any feedback there? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I would say that the, the data is updated uh, as often as it can be. Generally, that would likely follow a calendar or like a, an entire year's worth of time, um, generally, because it's, it's, it's most oftentimes uh, the data is underpinned by census data, uh, but uh, there is a third party data service provider um, that is always denoted at the very bottom of each of those uh, tabs. And so, for instance, I can actually very quickly and easily navigate to it. Um, but you would be able to actually see it at the very bottom of each and every um, one, there is a couple of different service providers. One of them I know is, is, is MC, um, or now known as Lightcast, um, but there are a number of different service providers. The way you would find out where that data exactly came from is by scrolling down to the bottom of this. So you can see here that this is Lightcast MC in 2022 data. Thank you, Josh. Um, the other question, if our platform interacts with other database, or other real estate databases. So, uh, and one example was location one. So, unfortunately, no, we have tried. Uh, however, location one and GIS planning, which is our provider, are competitors, and of course, they didn't want to share their, you know, each other's data. So, um, we couldn't make it work. Uh, we have tried to go that route because we understand, you know, some people do just use location one or other databases. So um, unfortunately you will need to submit uh, your properties on our database in order for them to, to be part of our system. Usually what I recommend is we have several properties already like Josh mentioned at the beginning. Always before entering a property, double check is not already in the system. Uh, we're getting several duplicates. So it's always good to double check you know, maybe someone on your county or some something or your regional economic development entity has already submitted your site, and then you just need to update it. Paulina, Josh, um, for a community that hasn't had any uh, connection to Intersect Illinois, what's the best place to start? Should they, it, do you offer, you alluded to training sessions, or do you have regular training sessions? Should somebody just contact you and say, hey, I'd like to be trained, and you'll then set something up on a customized basis? How does that all work? How does somebody get started with you? Yeah, so right now, um, Josh, we should go to the next uh, slide. Really, the best way to start is sending an email to Josh, and here's his contact information. He will send you credentials on our platform, and as well as train you one-on-one -on -one customized training uh, to walk you through the system and, you know, if you have any questions on how to submit properties. Um, right now, we are doing it one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, you know, at some point, we may end up, if it's a big group, doing kind of group presentations or training if needed. But we're doing it right now one-on-one, -on -one, so feel free to send an email to Josh um, to have your credentials and to be trained. Are there any costs associated uh, any costs for a community associated with participating in uh, either the uh, the zoomprospector.com platform or anything else in the process? 
No, uh, we usually don't charge for any of our services. We don't charge for companies and we don't charge to communities. Uh, we are now receiving you know, state money as well. So all our services are free of charge. And we tell the same to companies that are looking to relocate into Lumen. Well, that sounds like a, a nice offering. Um, I'm gonna take a moment and put up a quick poll and uh, hopefully uh, we can, we'll still have time for questions, but if folks who are uh, viewing would uh, go ahead and take a moment just to answer this quick poll. Um, another question has popped up. Yeah, I can see who can edit information on property. Can it be done by multiple users or just one that uploaded the property? Uh, Gina, it can be done by multiple users. Uh, pretty much the caveat there is they need to be on your region. So for instance, uh, I know, we work with Gina a lot. She covers North Central uh, Illinois. So let's say if someone in La Salle or you know another community Hennepin that you're covering, if they have uh, authorization for that geography, they are able to edit that property as well as anyone that works uh, on your organization. When a proposal comes in, if I understand it correctly, um, the uh, there's a judgment made by the Intersect Illinois team about which communities it might be of interest to, or can all communities see all proposals as they come in? Our goal is try to do a statewide, to expand it to statewide. Really, it goes back to the client. There are no more initial call with the client. If the client says, no, I just want to keep it in Chicago MSA, or I just want to look at these communities, uh, you know, like a radius from Decatur or something like that, a 45 minute drive time radius from Decatur, then, you know, we cannot send them statewide. And if they're not going to take a look at other communities, you know, there's, there's no point in it. But our initial call is to really educate the client of that, of areas that we can offer and usually to extend it to as much as possible. Just an example, the last seven projects we have sent have, have been the statewide. So we really try to keep keep it a statewide step if the, if the client or the consultant say, no, um, we, we don't want it statewide with one lead and try to see the reasoning and see if it makes sense or not. Thank you. Looks like you've got one vote of confidence here from uh, one of the participants. Generally pretty easy to use and uh, nice to have consistency that the platforms offer. Um, yes, responding to the question the copy of the presentation, everybody who's on today and has provided us with their email will get a copy of the uh, recording as well as of the slide presentation. Uh, any other questions anybody else would like to explore? Okay, we have one. How is a project discussed with a prospective client? Do the project managers talk directly with the client? Yes, usually um, it, it's either the directly the client or sometimes there's a site selection consultant. If there's a site selection consultant, uh, sometimes they don't want you to know who is their client and they work on a confidential basis. But if we're working directly with the company, we will be working one-on-one. -on -one. It's a project manager and usually I try to join that initial call, so uh, myself and the project manager, and sometimes we have, you know, if the state brings us the lead, we would have a person from the state. Of Illinois. Another vote of confidence, great work, Intersect Illinois. Um, any other questions out there among our attendees? What's the process to be able to gain access to the portal? So again, email Josh, and he's happy to set you up with the credentials. The only requirement is that you are an economic development entity and that you are the one that would be responding to this RFI. Uh, something else that we request is every request of information we send out there, any, any project, it has on top that this is confidential information and you cannot share. Uh, that is key for us. We don't want it to go to other states, right? And other states to be able to submit for those projects. So uh, 
we really, for us, it's very important that when you are part of this portal and the system, that uh, you keep the, the, the projects you receive confidential. Now, when you talk about um, economic development organizations, that is a term that's used broadly enough to include county officials, community officials. It, you don't have to be from a specifically constituted economic development organization. Yes, correct. We okay. uh, we understand it works different in each region. So, you know, if you are the one that would be responding to the RFIs, or you are managing someone that's going to be responding to them and would like to see the traffic to tell them, hey, we should respond to this one. Uh, feel free to to join, you know, oh, and, and email Josh, please. Very good. Any other questions out there? Yeah, indeed. Our, how often are projects made in the portal? Is there a standard for managers to make comments? Or where is a project within the active needs staff? So um, in terms of, of when we receive them, we never know, right? That's an of note. Uh, we have, based on historical data, we have numbers. I want to say we receive between, the minimum would be four, four new projects a month to, you know, it can be all up, up to 12 new projects a month or something like that, kind of in the higher end. Once they are sent and in the portal, uh, right now project managers uh, have the responsibility to be updating that information monthly. So sometimes if you don't see changes, that means that the project hasn't changed, right? They go month monthly to our CRM system, it's connected to GS planning and they update that information. But like I said, there's projects that do the initial evaluation and review for four, six months. So if you don't see changes and you're like, it's been three months and nothing has changed, is that they are still evaluating. Um, projects stay, all the projects stayed in our portal. So they being active on hold or lost, they will be in the portal and you will see on the comments information if the project's still active, if the project's on hold or if we lost the project or if it was won. Excellent. Well, we're starting to bump up against the end of our time here today. Um, anybody want in to get a last question? Well, on behalf of the University of Illinois Extension and Rural Partners, I really want to say thank you so much uh, to you, Paulina, and to you, Josh, for this very informative and data-rich presentation. Um, as I mentioned earlier, if you registered for the webinar, you'll receive the presentation materials and a link to the recording in a follow-up email. Um, I also want to invite all of our viewers to visit our website to register for future webinars at go.illinois.edu slash LGE. For example, um, I think everybody will get a charge out of an upcoming presentation on Wednesday, March 29th at noontime, as we're offering an infrastructure presentation on electrical vehicle charging at scale, pardon the pun. And remember that you can also use the same extension resource to find recordings of a host of our prior presentations on a wide variety of topics. So with that, thank you all for attending today's webinar. Have a great day, and we hope to see you back for future presentations. Thank you. Thank you.